the reformer, um, probably one of the most common pieces of the Pilates equipment. And it's basically a carriage, a moving carriage, um, that's attached by springs down at the bottom. So you can vary the spring tension depending on if you want more support or less support, depending on the specific exercise. So the carriage just opens and closes. You can be lying down on your back, pushing with your feet. You can be sitting, kneeling, standing. There are just tons of exercises and different positions that you can be on in this, on this apparatus. It's also really great because it is really versatile and it's easy to modify for different body types, sizes, strengths. Um, one of the reasons I like it is a lot of the exercises do start lying down on your back. So if you have an injury where you aren't up to full weight bearing yet, um, say an ankle sprain or something going on with your knee or your hips, you can still get some movement um, through the legs but without being in a full weight bearing position where gravity is, is affecting you completely. So um, we're going to show some of those exercises. For someone who's trying to get back to running or cycling or basketball or whatever it is that you need to have that power through the legs, but maybe you're not quite ready to do that standing upright, this is a great intermediate step to begin to train those muscles, to train the muscles correctly, and then be able to progress to standing upright. So jump board, you're just actually jumping. So we have a couple of springs attached here. Go ahead and do two feet. Good. So she's having to stabilize through her body, using her arms a little bit to control. She's engaging through her belly and her breath. And then using the power of her entire length of her legs and her core to press out and do the jumping. And it is really fun. So then you can do training on one leg, and we can vary the spring tension to make it a little heavier, a little lighter, depending on what you need. Go ahead and switch legs. And we can really get pretty creative with the jumps. We can go into leaping, exactly. Good. Skipping, I don't know if you remember skipping. So you jump and land on the same foot, and then bring this one down. Yep, good. Good, and then see if you can find the control to not slam the carriage. There you go, very nice. Excellent. Really good. And go ahead and rest. And it is great to allow people to get their heart rate up, to get breathing a little heavier, and feel like they're doing something when they're really missing their running or, or cycling or whatever it might be. So it's a, it's a great tool. So we're gonna do side splits. Go ahead and stretch your arms out to the side. Yeah, and I have her on a, fairly heavier weight and her legs are a little bit more narrow so we're going to start to target the outer hips and she's just going to push the carriage open and then draw it together again trying to keep everything centered here and trying to press evenly with both legs go ahead and unlock this knee just a little bit good so she's not only pressing with the moving leg but she's also pressing with the stabilizing leg to work those hip abductors good Definitely incorporates balance and control. It's a lot less stable than lying on your back, but it's a great way, again, to incorporate the whole body into this movement to strengthen the hips. Then by just changing the position of the foot, so go ahead and take your foot a little farther out as far as you feel comfortable. Yep. And I'm gonna drop the spring down, so it's a much lighter spring tension. She can now go farther, okay? into more of a split, but then she has to be able to pull herself back together. So now we're changing the effort of the movement from the hip abductors to the hip adductors, the inner thigh muscles. So she's having to really recruit those inner thighs to bring the carriage back in. And as you can see, we get more of a stretch out of this movement too. So a lot of the Pilates movements are incorporating stretching, control, balance, stability, strengthening, all in one exercise, which is really great. Hands are going to come down onto the foot bar, thumbs are with your fingers, and your feet are going to go together on the headrest where that little black sticky pad is. You're going to shift your weight forward so you're in a plank as though you're going to go into a push-up. The abs are lifted, the hips are lifted just a little tiny bit more. Yes, good. And then I'm going to take my foot off, hold here for a second, and don't allow the carriage to move, so just hold. I have her on a really light spring tension, which makes it hard for her to hold the carriage close. So she's going to hinge at the shoulder joints, opening up the carriage just a little bit, and then exhale, pulling the belly muscles in to just shoot her head forward to pull the carriage closed. 
So again, it's a really small movement, but that is a light spring tension, and she's having to recruit a lot of muscles from her core and from her arms to stabilize and, and not let that carriage get out of control underneath her. Really good. Excellent. And then go ahead and pike your hips up and take your feet in front of the shoulder blocks and heels down. So this one is kind of like a downward dog position in yoga. We call it elephant in Pilates. I'm going to switch the spring. And now we are going to hinge more at the hip joints. And she's just going to take the legs out from underneath her a little bit. And then on the exhale, again, the belly is going to pull the legs back in. So a fairly simple movement, but she's having to really stabilize through her arms, connect into the shoulders, Get a stretch through the whole back of the leg, the hamstrings and the calves. And then again, the movement to come in is coming from the belly, which she's drawing in and up every time she pulls the carriage underneath her. And we could take this into arabesque, which is where we take one leg out behind and straight it, straighten it out up to the ceiling. Good. So if you want to make it a little bit more advanced, really focusing on one leg at a time, you can do the same exact movement, opening and closing the carriage, Good, drop this hip down just a little bit towards the floor. Yeah, good. Exactly. So this first piece, you can keep your hands down and you're just gonna start to stretch out that front leg moving the carriage. So come back into your lunges like this. Yeah. And so when you straighten your leg, keep your hips down and then you're gonna press the springs open. Ah. Yeah, there you go, good. So you can just go out as far as you feel comfortable. It's a great stretch for a lot of things. <laughs> so the oh, yeah. right hamstring, this back calf, the hip flexor even, depending on where you're tight, you might feel this in a variety of different places. So you can just work on that stretching piece and then stay in and stay in your lunge. And if you feel comfortable, come upright to take your hands onto your shin, your uh, thigh, sorry. Good. And then we can start to work on balance, opening and closing here, still getting a stretch. And if you feel comfortable, the arms can go out to the sides. Exactly. Perfect. And then bring your hands back down onto the foot bar. Lower this knee down onto the mat, if you can. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then you can just pull your pelvis forward and again get another stretch for the front of the left hip. This is my favorite. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> this is really good. So this is again yeah. focusing on the hip flexor quad region on that left thigh. 